Step right up and prepare for an unforgettable journey. Released in 1979, this TV movie delivers a roller coaster of comedy and action that's bound to leave you breathless. From the hilarious characters to the heart-pounding plot twists, there's something for everyone to enjoy in this classic gem. What makes this TV movie stand the test of time? Well, it's got qualities that keep fans coming back for more. From its memorable characters to its exciting storyline, there's a lot to love about it. But did you know there are some surprising facts about this TV movie that will blow your mind? Yes, indeed. There's a treasure trove of fascinating anecdotes waiting to be uncovered. Now, we want to hear from you. What's your fondest memory or personal experience related to this TV movie? Share your stories with us because we'd love to hear from you. So, grab your snacks and get ready for an adventure like no other. This TV movie is about to take you on a wild ride filled with laughter, surprises, and maybe even a tear or two. The Villain, a movie that hit the screens in 1979, takes us on a wild ride through the Old West. Set against the backdrop of dusty towns and sprawling deserts, the plot revolves around a scheming outlaw named Cactus Jack, portrayed by Kirk Douglas. He hatches a plan to kidnap the beautiful Charming Jones, played by Anne Margaret, with the intention of forcing her into marriage and securing her wealth. However, Cactus Jack's plans go haywire when a dashing cowboy, Handsome Stranger, portrayed by Arnold Schwarzenegger, enters the scene. Handsome Stranger becomes the unexpected hero, determined to thwart Cactus Jack's villainous scheme and rescue Charming Jones. The movie unfolds with a blend of comedy, action, and classic Western elements. As the characters navigate the unpredictable terrain of the Old West, viewers are treated to a series of humorous and thrilling escapades. The clash between the bumbling villain and the heroic cowboy creates a captivating narrative that keeps audiences entertained from start to finish. The villain received acclaim for its unique blend of genres and the charismatic performances of the main cast. While not a blockbuster, the movie earned recognition for its comedic approach to the Western genre. Kirk Douglas, in particular, received praise for his portrayal of the eccentric and comical outlaw. In summary, the villain is a delightful journey into the Old West, filled with humor, action, and memorable characters. The 1979 film stands out for its entertaining storyline and the stellar performances of Kirk Douglas, Anne Margaret, and Arnold Schwarzenegger. Though not a massive box office hit, it remains a noteworthy addition to the world of Western cinema. In the 1979 movie, the villain, Arnold Schwarzenegger, known for his famous line, I'll be back from the Terminator, initially said, I'll come back. Despite James Cameron's initial desire for Schwarzenegger to play Kyle Reese in the Terminator, Arnold persuaded him to let him portray the machine, emphasizing, trust me. He was also considered for the role of Judge Dredd in Judge Dredd, but lost out to Sylvester Stallone, another Planet Hollywood founder. In a classic movie from 1979, a well-known actor who was highly respected starred alongside another actor recognized for his diverse roles. The second actor even once played a character based on a famous playwright, which led many people to confuse him with the real playwright. He also appeared in several films with another famous actor, showing his ability to adapt to different roles. The movie they starred in together shows the incredible talents of both actors, leaving a lasting impression on viewers. In a scene portraying a burning cat house, a caricature of Burt Reynolds graces the side, a nod from director Hal Needham to his friend, Paul Lind. While in Salt Lake City in January 1978, encountered legal trouble outside a tavern, but the complaint against him was later dropped. Arnold Schwarzenegger, despite being ineligible for the U.S. presidency due to his foreign-born status, became governor of California in 23, debunking earlier considerations for a constitutional amendment. He later stated his belief that foreign-born citizens should not be eligible for the presidency, quieting any further discussion on the matter. In 1979, a movie united a diverse group of actors, including a well-known figure recognized for his work both on and off the screen. Over two decades later, he was honored in Washington, D.C. for his efforts in expanding opportunities for Americans, particularly the youth. Interestingly, this film subtly references another beloved movie through a shared visual motif connecting two distinct cinematic worlds. Among the cast is a seasoned actor with an impressive filmography, including several movies recognized for their cultural significance by the Library of Congress. These elements, combined with the action and humor of the film, offer viewers an entertaining and thought-provoking experience worth exploring. In 1979, the villain brought together a cast with diverse backgrounds. Arnold Schwarzenegger, who sported long hair during an appearance on The Tonight Show starring Johnny Carson, was in the midst of growing it out for his role in Conan the Barbarian. 
Kirk Douglas, known for claiming an engagement to Pierre Angeli during filming of the story of Three Loves, added depth to the ensemble. Meanwhile, Paul Lynn's birthplace sign in Mount Vernon, Ohio, underwent a recent change, recognizing Daniel Decatur Emmett as the town's notable figure. These actors brought unique experiences to the film, enriching its narrative. In the making of the villain, Kirk Douglas initially pursued adapting One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, but shifted focus when nothing materialized. His son, Michael, took charge as a producer, seeking stars like Marlon Brando and Gene Hackman, who declined roles. The film was shot in a disused mental hospital with actual staff and patients, including Angelica Houston. Another Western comedy, The Frisco Kid, shared its release year, but both failed at the box office. The titles The Villain and Cactus Jack point to the central antagonist portrayed by Kirk Douglas. In homage to the great American cartoons, the characters Avery Simpson and Parody Jones pay tribute to Tex Avery and Chuck Jones, the geniuses behind Warner Brothers Cartoon Studio. And Margaret, not a natural redhead, had her hair colored by Sidney Gilleroff, who also transformed Lucille Ball into a redhead. Ruth Boozy, a regular on the best of the Dean Martin celebrity roasts, rounds out the cast. It's a nod to the talent both on and off screen, making the villain a unique blend of homage and originality in the realm of American cinema. Early on in his career, he appeared on a TV show called The Dating Game. Later, he acted in a movie alongside Elliot Good called The Long Goodbye, which has an interesting connection to a date mentioned in Terminator 2 Judgment Day. A book called Fantastic, The Life of Arnold Schwarzenegger dives into his life story, revealing interesting details. It talks about how he started from very little and became famous all around the world. The book tells a story in a way that makes you want to keep reading. Arnold's journey is like a really good movie, full of ups and downs. It's a story that sticks with you, even after you've finished reading. So, if you're interested in learning more about him, this book is a must-read. In his career, Schwarzenegger rarely did sequels to his own movies, with only a few exceptions. Despite this, he turned down several sequels, including Commando, Predator, Total Recall, and True Lies, as well as the third film in the Conan series, which became Call the Conqueror. The villain was not produced by Warner Brothers, but by Columbia Pictures, despite being a live-action version of Warner Brothers' Looney Tunes cartoons. And Margaret, initially cast for the lead role, was replaced by Faye Dunaway.